Hey everyone, I'm Eric Hutchison. I'm a customer engineer with the Looker team at Google Cloud. And today we're talking about log analytics and observability with Looker and BigQuery. So first off, let's do a quick level set. What is log data? A log is basically a stream of events coming from a machine, like an IT server, an application, uh, a network router, uh, or an IoT device. So everything that these applications do creates an event inside of a log. And there's a lot of uses for this data within an organization. And increasingly, we're finding that many companies want to put business logic on top of this data. So let's look at kind of the main use cases for log data. First off, with product analytics, if you're a SaaS company or a digital native, your cloud-based applications are literally your product, your livelihood. Um, so understanding how your users are using your product and being able to respond to its critical incidents are extremely important. Next, IT operations and observability. So monitoring your IT infrastructure, troubleshooting system errors, predicting outages, all of these come kind of under that umbrella. And finally, cybersecurity, detecting threats, investigating incidents, knowing if there's a bad actor on your network, fall under cybersecurity. So these are the, the main kind of use cases for log data. Log data is critical for all of these uses. Um, and let's, let's talk through kind of how log data is different from say your everyday business data that you and I work with day to day. So first off, log data comes with a massive data volume. If you have every one of your applications, your servers generating a row of data for everything that it does, that adds up across all of your different servers across time, that gets to be a very large data volume. There's also a need to know now. So what I mean by that is uh, if, there's, if, if there's a security incident happening on your network, if there's a server outage, these are all things that you need to know pretty much immediately and be able to react to immediately. Raw data or data in its, its raw form can sometimes not have a ton of meaning. So aggregation to find trends becomes really important. Also being able to quickly and iteratively investigate your data uh, becomes important, especially as it relates to the next bullet, uh, anomalous behavior or abnormal behavior. If you're looking at something that's happening in your data that you've never seen before, uh, you're going to want to be able to ask a lot of questions around that to, to figure out what's going on. Now that we've kind of gone through the unique characteristics of log data, let's hear from one of our customers who uses Looker in this fashion already. So a top three home improvement supplier uh, came to us, I think three to three or four years ago with this challenge. They needed multiple teams to be able to access their logs for security, for application, for infrastructure. And these were kind of three different teams within this organization. Uh, they needed the flexibility to be able to, to see, to be able to research, to be able to troubleshoot events in an ad hoc fashion. And the scale was a major part of their challenge. They had 10 terabytes of log data a day. Their prior tech stack required dozens of on-prem servers in order to meet that demand. And they weren't able to have visibility into historical trends. Their, their prior tech stack was very focused on what was happening today, what was happening yesterday. It was not very good at what was happening the last 90 days or what was happening year over year, or is there seasonality in any of this, these events? Um, so they weren't able to, to, to do that long-term historical reporting. And all of that kind of added up to a very costly solution as well. So they came to us and wanted to use the Looker data platform to provide access across each of those three different departments and only give them access to the data that each of those departments needs. Uh, they wanted to use Looker's explore uh, function to research and troubleshoot their log events. And a major part of their use case came around scheduled alerting. So they had a number of different criteria that if their data met those criteria or those thresholds, they wanted to be alerted about those things. Uh, to give you a, a simple example, let's say a, a user ID logged in in the United States and that same user ID then logged in on a computer in Russia five minutes later. Um, those were the types of things that they wanted to have Looker kind of running queries in the background and looking for those things. And as soon as those conditions were met, trigger an alert. 
And they use Looker's Action Hub um, to, to do that alerting. If you're not familiar with the Action Hub, basically you can send data to an email, uh, to a Slack channel, to a text message, or you can send data to any downstream application to kind of trigger a custom workflow. So they were able to tie the Action Hub into their own custom ticketing and alerting system that they had homegrown uh, and use that to alert uh, folks that needed to be able to respond to those types of incidents. And lastly, BigQuery was a major part of this solution. Uh, because of the scale and the data volume that they had uh, and, and the types of queries they wanted to run across those data sets, none of them would have been possible without BigQuery serverless architecture and, and query power to be able to power, uh, say, running a 90-day historical report over terabytes of, of log data. And, and the outcome was really, basically they were able to get, meet all of the requirements that they had and also save a lot of money. So if I come back and revisit that slide on characteristics of log analytics, you can kind of see that uh, each of those characteristics lines up very nicely with, with BigQuery and Looker features. So that massive data volume is met by BigQuery's processing power, uh, the need to know now is met by BigQuery streaming uh, to get data into BigQuery in a, in a near real-time fashion, uh, as well as Looker alerts. And as many of you know, LookML is a great way of, of giving meaning to raw data. Obviously, Looker dashboards can be used to aggregate and find trends. Uh, Looker's Explorer can be used to quickly uh, investigate and iterate on data. And lastly, the anomalous activity can be handled by BigQuery Machine Learning, or BQML, which can run machine learning models like a K-means cluster model, for example, to identify what's normal and what's abnormal, uh, identify those anomalies, and then use Looker's alerting and action hub to be able to trigger um, notifications and, and action. Excellent. So now that we've talked about the different characteristics of uh, log data, let's talk about how we can get started using Looker and BigQuery uh, in this fashion. First off, we have a set of pre-built Looker blocks, uh, mainly for the security analytics side of these things, for GCP cloud audit logs, for GCP's Chronicle security software, uh, as well as AWS's CloudTrail, which is kind of the AWS equivalent of GCP's cloud audit logs. If you're not familiar with Looker blocks, they're basically pre-built data models uh, built on top of, you know, predictable or static um, data structures that are coming out of each of these applications. And they can get you up to speed very quickly. You can download it from the Looker Marketplace uh, and get up and running extremely quickly. We also have a potential future roadmap if there's a, if there's a strong demand for it for Google Drive, Gmail, reCAPTCHA. These are other log data sources that we could um, build Looker blocks on top of. However, if you have something that's not on this list, um, if you have a homegrown applications logs that you want to put Looker on, uh, it doesn't have to be uh, pre-built in a block. You're, you're in luck because the process is extremely easy. Uh, you can get your own custom application into Looker in a matter of minutes, whether it's in a block or not. And that's the process that I want to walk you through now. Um, so I can give you that end-to-end -end experience that starts with the log actually being generated on the server and ends with it being analyzed in Looker. Let's take a look at the logs that are being generated by this fictional online e-commerce application. We can see that it's running on a Kubernetes container. Uh, we can also see if we look at one of the, the HTTP uh, requests, we can see it's a GET request related to a particular product. Uh, it took 32 milliseconds and the request was complete. And it had a response status of 200, which means the request was successful. It wasn't an error. So obviously looking at one event isn't gonna be super useful here. I wanna put this data into BigQuery and analyze it in Looker so I can look at all of the data. And I'm gonna talk about the, the very simple process to do that. Um, and I, I will kind of caveat this, uh, that there's many different ways of getting log data into your data warehouse or into BigQuery. Um, I'm gonna focus on one particular way. I would say it's probably the easiest and simplest and requires the least amount of um, human involvement uh, for a lot of it. So I'm gonna talk through that, but there's many other ways that you can use to, uh, to get that data into your data warehouse. 
in this process, it starts with the, the GCP cloud logging agent, which can be installed on any server that you have. If you're, if you're using a server that's in GCP, hosted in GCP, it comes with uh, the cloud logging agent installed by default. You don't have to install it. Um, and what that does is it basically parses logs into events where they're being generated. Um, it's based in FluentD, which is an industry standard. And it's then going to pass off those logs into the cloud logging API. And what that does is it's, it's going to automatically create the BigQuery table structure in BigQuery. It's going to ingest the logs in real time and pass that data into BigQuery, where again, that schema is generated automatically. Um, it even handles semi-structured data like JSON objects are going to be um, mapped into columns that can then be used very easily within the data warehouse and within Looker. And this end-to-end -end process can be set up in less than 10 minutes. Once that data is in, in BigQuery, or actually let's focus on the log structure and how it gets mapped to BigQuery. So you can see, again, as I mentioned, that log structure is gonna get mapped into a BigQuery column structure uh, very simply. And once that data is in BigQuery, um, as many of you may know, we have a LookML generator. Once that data is in uh, your data warehouse or in BigQuery, uh, Looker is gonna automatically generate the LookML around each of those columns. It's also gonna add group labels to neatly organize the fields in the Explorer and Looker. Um, so on the right side of the screen, you can see what comes out of uh, the Looker Explorer. None of that was hand-coded LookML. That's kind of how it gets generated by default. So you can see it, it gets organized very cleanly. It's ready to use pretty much automatically. Um, and it's gonna give you all of the fields that are in the logs, um, and all of the columns that are in BigQuery for you to be able to use and analyze in Looker. But we don't want to just use the default fields that are auto-generated. We want to start defining some business logic or some logic on top of that to enable our analysis. So I'm going to walk you through an example of that. So on the top right of the screen, uh, we're still looking at that same log event that we were looking at before. And I want to start applying some logic that's going to give more meaning to that. So for one, I want to know if this uh, request was an error or not. And how I can do that is create a simple is error, yes, no dimension or a Boolean dimension that says if the response status is greater than or equal to 400, yes, it is an error. Great. Done that. Um, now I can reuse that logic that I just defined in the next measure, error count. So I can do a filtered count. Um, of events filtered on only when that is error is yes. That's going to give me the, the overall aggregate count of errors. And I can then again kind of reuse that logic in something like uh, availability percent, otherwise known as uptime, where I can take the total count of errors divided by the total count of events and calculate our availability percent, our uptime across any other dimension that I have in my, in my logs. So what does that look like um, as an end result? It will look like something like this on a dashboard, um, where on the top left, I'm looking at my total availability, my total uptime, in this case, over the last three hours. But I could also filter that on the last three years if I wanted to. Also, the total number of errors that are happening on my application, I can see that. I can also trend that uh, with the trends underneath each of these single value visualizations. I can look at latency. Um, I can even look at something that we might even consider a business metric, not kind of an observability or an IT operations metric, like the number of orders that's occurring on the application. This might be useful for someone on the business side, potentially. So this gives you kind of a good picture of that end result after you've gotten your log data into BigQuery, started defining some LookML, and then start visualizing it on a Looker dashboard. Another example of kind of an end result here related to anomaly detection. Um, and we have a blog published on this uh, in, on the GCP side where we cover how you can use BigQuery, how can you, you can use BigQuery machine learning to do a K-means cluster model to identify anomalies. You can then move that data uh, or use Looker to, to use that data to um, visualize, to alert, and to take action on that data. So to kind of um, 
bring this all back and summarize it, uh, here are the main benefits uh, that we hear from our customers um, of using Looker and BigQuery on log data. There's a strong potential for cost savings, especially as it relates to looking at really large historical time periods in your data. BigQuery and Looker are gonna meet the scale of kind of your modern data demands by, by being able to ingest and analyze all of your log data across all of your applications. It brings a very user-friendly user interface, which can be useful for doing analytics on this data with uh, people that might not have like a DevOps background, for example, or a, a security SOC background. You can put this in the hands of business users um, and they'll be able to analyze this data very, very simply. And also the, the flexibility of not only being able to visualize, create dashboards, explore the data, but also be able to, to take action, to do alerting, et cetera. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining me in this session, and I hope you enjoy the rest of Join at Home 2021. Thank you.